Welcome to GUI and in web browsers, weekly call, it's 2020, uh, 9th of January. Um, we are one day later. Uh, and missing to, one blue sweatshirt. Because of reasons, and I did not get a memo about uh, sweatshirt, so we'll fix that in post. Uh, all right, uh, let's quickly jump to uh, to my space. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally space. Uh, this week's agenda, uh, we had a brief chat about uh, doing a weekly check-in on issues across uh, IPFS desktop, uh, IPFS web UI, uh, companion and other GUI applications. Uh, we we will update uh, readmes of projects to give people uh, a pointer that they can use this uh, this, re uh, this call uh, as uh, a place to bring some pressing matters to our attention and uh, also uh, to uh, decrease the pressure of uh, following up on uh, and responding uh, on issues uh, in a timely manner, we'll try to like respond within a week, but we don't want to get distracted by, by this churn. Um, did you do you want to add anything, or did I like but but? No, that, I think I think there's a good summary. Like making yeah. sure that w more people can come to this meeting to bring up their critical issues, and that uh, the the teams can spend more time doing the deeper work and making bigger changes that need to happen, and have very clear points of time at which we analyze, triage, and handle various reports, um, and get, getting more people to come hang out in this meeting at the same time. So it seem, seems like a win-win, and will help us make some of the bigger changes we need to make in the, in the project. Uh, one thing that I would add here, like uh, Hack brought up, Awesome IPFS is another place to add. So maybe list out the repos here that we should add this note to. Oh, yeah, here. yeah. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, we post uh, desktop web UI. Uh, uh, yeah, are there any other high traffic ones where people go report stuff? Mm, 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 Seems like a lot of web UI stuff gets reported in through desktop yeah. repo anyway. Yeah, it's like uh, that's the, the entry point usually. We often like move issues from web UI. Because like in web UI, we got this link in the left uh, bottom corner. Uh, report an issue and people report issues <laughs> not always those issues are about web ui uh, what, one, one thing let's let's do like a test week of this mm -hmm. too a week or two and just see how it goes um if people feel like if it feels like like things are languishing and we are concerned about things going without a response for too long like mm -hmm. let's make sure like we can do a test like we can have a, a github action autoresponder on issues too like hey we usually check these uh, once or twice a week but you know generally once a week during this meeting, feel free. So we can even add an autoresponder like that to issues. Um, but let's, let's play around with it and just see what, what works and doesn't. See if, if, if the world goes on fire after we haven't answered stuff in two days, then clearly we need to figure out some other way of, of communicating that. Mm -hmm. so before we go full on autoresponder, let's try it out for a couple of weeks and see how it goes. Yeah, sounds good. Um, should we move to the next one? Subdomain gateways update. That's me. I can I can uh, take this one. Uh, it's just an update. Uh, so background on subdomain gateways. I think like uh, the background is uh, that we have this problem of uh, representing uh, content routes on the web. So on the web, when you load a website uh, to your web browser, uh, the key uh, primitive for security is origin. Origin is protocol, host name, and port. Um, and based on those three uh, components, uh, a sandbox is created. And when you want to read or write cookies, make cross-site uh, 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 requests, uh, you need to either do that within a single origin or you need to have a permission from the external origin uh, 
uh, for making those requests. Uh, the problem is when you represent IPFS uh, content on the web, uh, the old school gateways use uh, uh, the old school, uh, do I have this? Ah. I think so, yeah. It's, this will be a better illustration. So the old school gateways are path-based. When you have a uh, origin here, and all websites are under that single origin. So that's uh, good for fetching content. Uh, not that good if you want to do an application that uh, utilizes uh, web APIs, because those web APIs are confined within a single origin, and some APIs require additional permission, and if that permission is granted, it's granted for entire origin. So. A single website here will get a request uh, permission and, and every other website loaded from uh, path uh, gateway will get that as well. So our uh, pragmatic solution, right, which is possible and supported by all browser vendors right now, is to uh, make sure the content route represented by a CID is the same as origin. So origin is protocol, uh, host name, and port. Port, the default port for HTTPS is 443, I believe. Um, so the proposed solution are subdomain gateways. And subdomain gateways uh, basically solve the problem by creating a separate origin for each content route. So content identifier, lands in subdomain and every sub resource under that content root is confined within the single origin. Uh, I probably did a better job uh, explaining it uh, in past. If I find it, uh, I'll link it in the notes. But this is what you get today. It's a bit late. Um, this, was, this was beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, we, we basically we got this uh, naming convention. When you put CID in subdomain, then it's that, and then there's IPFS and your domain name, and and that's it. You get origin isolation for free. Uh, the problem is uh, for now, uh, maybe a good, uh, uh, I believe a good illustration uh, are public gateways. So we got this public gateway list. Uh, created by community and there's a additional uh, column here which shows which gateways support this subdomain mode uh, right now it's like the web link which is uh, provided uh, by IPFS project uh, well this one is from Cloudflare someone contributed uh, one here but the remaining ones are the old school path uh, based gateways those are perfectly fine gateways however it's important to uh, to understand that if you are creating a web application which is using uh, APIs that are sensitive to origin isolation, you should, uh, if you are sharing links to those uh, websites, uh, you should use uh, subdomain uh, gateways. Uh, and those gateways exist right now, but to create one, you need to do a path translation at the engine, like reverse proxy levels. Usually it's an Nginx configuration which takes a CID from host header and puts it like uh, as a suffix uh, to the path. Um, what we want to do is to make it uh, seamless for people so everyone can easily run their own subdomain gateway. And to do that, we want to add support for subdomain gateways uh, natively to Go IPFS and also JS IPFS. Uh, so there's an open PR here. And uh, we proposed a way for people to uh, configure the way the gateway functionality works in a more flexible way. Right now, you just, uh, you just expose a port and that's it. Uh, but some people may want to simply host their own website, which is backed by DNS link and not return arbitrary content 
added to IPFS by other people. Some other people may want to run subdomain and path gateway using the same hardware, however, using different domains, uh, and also uh, DNS link websites. So we came up with uh, this uh, configuration scheme when you can, uh, using this simple notation, uh, enable subdomain gateway, path gateway, and also DNS link website. Uh, natively in Go IPFS. So that's something we will land in uh, Q1. Um, but if uh, anyone is interested how it will work or plans to run a subdomain gateway, make sure to follow this, uh, this issue. Um, and when that lands in Go IPFS and JS IPFS, uh, we will update IPFS companion so it uh, here you can see that on the default list, the local host gateway uh, will be enabled by default. So the idea is that we will test if your operating system and browser vendor supports subdomains on local host, host name. And if it works, uh, we will enable redirect to that. That will provide origin isolation on local host. Um, so that's... Uh, upcoming in, in the following uh, weeks and months uh, on subdomain gateways. And if anyone got any questions, uh, we, I'm, I'm happy to, to chat on IRC on Freenode. Uh, IPFS in web browsers is the name of the channel. The link is uh, in the notes. Uh, next one is also me. I should like interweave uh, other ones, <laughs> so. I don't talk for too long. All right, that's what I will make it brief. So end-to-end uh, -end test for web UI landed. Uh, the PR is merged, so uh, web UI has end-to-end -end tests for every screen. Uh, we test uh, uploads of multiple files. Um, uh, let me, maybe let me quickly, oh yeah. So here's the build. And yep, so we got unit tests here, and then we build uh, Web UI, and then we run end to end tests against uh, Go. And we see you can pick what version was used for uh, testing. So this is the latest uh, stable version of Go IPFS, and here we test it against JS IPFS. And it's also the latest stable version. Uh, the next step, uh, which should land this week, is to run um, to run the same test, however, in JS IPFS. So there's some like open PR which I was debugging today, uh, but uh, it's still work in progress. The idea is to uh, have a external test. So the JS IPFS. Every time someone changes uh, something in JS IPFS, the part of that test suite will be uh, running the same test suite, like running the web UI test suite against the head of JS IPFS uh, using that sp specific binary. Uh, so that will make us, like everyone, sleep uh, better at night. <laughs> so uh, I, I have to thank you so much for your. Uh, effort on this, both of you, and it looks like Hugo did some reviewing too. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a dream of mine since I first joined the project. So, and you did all the work to make that dream come true. So, I just wanted to give a special thanks for all of the hard work and making this happen. It's really important moment and milestone in the project, health and maturity, and for quality and stability. Thank you for your work. Uh, it Wait, wait until I add it to Go IPFS as well, because <laughs> I, I want that, I want to like uh, Go IPFS team also sleep well uh, to know and know that they did not break. I, I hear they have a release coming out soon. Yeah, so it'd be uh, nice to have. Yeah, so uh, there too, like just uh, to finish up uh, that uh, environment variables that you can pass uh, to. Uh, to run end-to-end -end tests against either Go IPFS and JS IPFS from NPM, or you can just start some developer version of JS or Go 
and just point test suit at arbitrary uh, endpoint. Uh, so we'll probably use this one for in Go IPFS because they don't use Azure. <laughs> um, so that's the plan. Uh, that's the update. Uh, though more details in README of Web UI. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> I'll stop sharing now. That's amazing. Um, next one is review browser design guidelines. Yes, this is me. So I talked to you about this project previously and you both participated in one of the early workshops and we are at the point where the re research is mostly complete. So I'm, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good chunk of work though. So um, let me share a screen here. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna wanna schedule a separate session where we just go over this work. Um, together can you see this yep all right so this is you know the table of contacts we started with a, a set of research uh kind of a review of existing url bars um so interviews of people that work in this space uh, browser designers at browser teams um some p2p experts uh, we talked we talked with us uh, about, about our attitudes our understanding what kind of the problem space was and what the challenges are going to be uh, and from there, really walk through, you know, the um, set of set of browsers that exist. We picked the top four by market share, and then did an analysis of kind of similarities and differences of these. Um, as noted some uniquely differentiating features. So places where some browsers had decided for a given feature they wanted to have a a, a much more fleshed out set of capabilities to make them differentiators because that's what something uh, akin to what IPFS or any type of P2P protocol support would be. How they how they did that work and treated it, uh, and then coming up with a common, common set of understanding what the components are. Uh, lots of interviews were had with some interesting conclusions about URLs and addresses that I think will inform our work going forward. But the the most important bit are these kind of themes and patterns that that we identified. And, and I'll schedule a meeting where we can do a longer review of this as a browser team, but also present this at the one of the upcoming IPFS weeklies once it's finalized. The, uh, some, of the, some of the bigger themes are, you know, obviously around trust. So the existing model has a, the, of the web has a trust model that while it has pros O's and cons is something that we need to understand when we're loading uh, resources from IPFS in a regular browser. This is a question that browser vendors are gonna have that we're gonna be able to, you know, we need to be able to have advice and guidance on uh, security, what, it, what does it mean against tracking? Um, you know, one of the themes that came out of the research is that that is a thing that's pretty, that seems to have worked. Like people are worried about it, even as they use Chrome, uh, which is, you know, this, you know, this cognitive dissonance kind of happening about the behaviors that people have. And we're pretty, as technologists, people design stuff, we're pretty aware of that phenomenon. Um, but like, what does it mean that, that something is distributed and that's something that you have to visually communicate? So some of the you know, patterns, do's and don'ts, uh, how about access controls, Network status is extra important when it's not just a point to point, you know, request response pattern, uh, showing progress when things are indeterminate. Um, so some, some of these are basics, but laying out these guidelines in a way that design teams and security teams can, can walk through. Um, you know, walking through examples of iconography. Uh, these aren't, aren't finalized. These are, uh, we're not even recommending a specific set of iconography, but more like what are the states that things might be in as resources are being loaded that designers are going to have to design for when they're implementing this in browsers. Um, what are the you know, types of, of, of invalid circumstances that the user might find themselves? Um, things like uh, hot, ways of integrating availability, different states of navigational events during a load, really important. Um, so, I mean, it, it goes on and on. There's really a lot of information here. And so that I, and that's one of the reasons why I really want you know, your, your feedback in particular, both of you from having worked in the, the GUI and browser worlds of IPFS for a while. Um, so I'll schedule a, a separate time, but then we'll also share this with the broader community once it's, once it's finalized. But I think it's gonna be hugely useful for us going forward. And we're already talking about kind of what the next phase would be in terms of doing mobile app uh, design guidelines. So the, one of the things that came out of this is that we were focusing on desktop browser implementation, since that's kind of like the, the, the starting point for where, where we started with IPFS Companion and initial work with Brave. Uh, 
but the nature of, of workflows on mobile are, are really different. We, we thought about trying to fit them into this design guidelines to start, and it really didn't work out because not only is the user interface of mobile browsers very, very different than desktop browsers uh, and differs wildly between mobile browsers, but there's also this, those apps are a subset of native apps on mobile where we have things like Textile and Verdi and uh, a bunch of other different projects that are building native mobile apps on top of IPFS that might need to be able to communicate these things. And a browser is a subset of that total set of mobile apps. So I think that phase two is probably going to be mobile focused set of design guidelines that um, apply to native apps as a whole, but browsers as a specialized subset of that type of application. So more, more coming soon from there. And this will probably be finalized by the end of the month and then presented at IPFS Weekly and run blog posts like that. Uh, the next item on the agenda is also me. What is, what is libp2p Stardust? I, I can give approximate answer to that one. <laughs> uh, all right, so the background is maybe I'll share my screen and start opening new tabs because that's what I'm good at. Um, all right, so uh, leave P2P web star uh, web. So, yep. See, see how I changed the topic? We are now talking about WebSocket star. Um, and that's important to start here because uh, in web browser, um, we don't have DHD yet. So the question is, how do I discover other peers? How do I um, ask other peers for content that I'm not able to connect directly because those people are maybe also in the web browser and they cannot open TCP ports. So it's a WebSocket star, it was like a temporary solution for connectivity in web browser context. It provides means of both announcing ourselves uh, to, uh, to the rest of the IPFS network. A WebSocket star is a server uh, and a transport. So in the JS IPFS, it's a transport that you can enable and the ser it uses a rendezvous server. So the rendezvous server is a service that you run somewhere and it listens on, on a port for WebSocket connections. That's useful because web browser can connect to it. So uh, when JS IPFS starts in web browser and it has this rendezvous server, configured somewhere, it will uh, connect to it um, and it will announce itself, hey, it's me. And the rendezvous server will also provide a address for that peer. And that address can be used by anyone on IPFS network for dialing to that node. So it's sort of like a proxy but it's a, basically, it's like a rendezvous server, which are also acts as a relay. So it does. Does that mean that the the client end of that that's running inside of a web page, for example, mm -hmm. can actually serve blocks? Yes. Okay. Yep. So uh, you get an address which starts with the address of rendezvous server. In the beginning, the rendezvous server address is the suffix of the address, and then you got the uh, uh, peer ID of your node. So basically, it's like your peer ID is announcing itself at that rendezvous server. Um, so it, it's just like an address. Uh, anyone can connect to it. Um, even other nodes running in the browser can connect to it. So that's where WebSocket Star is pretty old. Uh, it was created in the beginning of JSIPFS project to, to just give a basic, uh, ba like uh, give a basic connectivity until we figured out this peer-to-peer -peer signaling, which uh, Jacob uh, has on his uh, roadmap after uh, async iterators refactor is done. So 
That being said, WebSocket Star is the old school, and the uh, the name I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, Lippy to piece Stardust uh, is basically a rewrite of WebSocket Star made by M MKG with long number. <laughs> it's Mache. Uh, Mache. Uh, contributed uh, a better version of WebSocket Star some time ago. And we, I don't, I'm not sure if it landed or not, uh, but it's a, it's a better version of WebSocket Star. It addresses some uh, problems uh, with, with WebSocket Star. The problem is that we have this plan to, uh, to sunset um, WebSocket Star like totally. Uh, the problem with WebSocket Star is that you need to hard code this rendezvous server in your configuration. Uh, it's a single point of failure. If that rendezvous server is down, you lose the connectivity. Uh, JSAPFS supports multiple rendezvous servers and at least one needs to work. So you can have like three that gives you more robustness, but still it's like a single, like multiple points of failure. Uh, those are centralized signaling servers uh, are just a temporary. Uh, thing that we use, uh, we there's uh, this issue in just LP2P repo uh, David created uh, with more details. Uh, what I said, but better explained about history of uh, uh, WebSocket Star uh, and why we want to move away from those centralized uh, services. So the problem uh, is that like. Stardust is better than this old school WebSocket style. The problem is that it's not fully drop-in replacement. It, it's, uh, this, the protocol is uh, a little bit different, so it requires a different set of rendezvous servers. And we cannot like, simply shut down old ones and un use the same host names to start the Stardust servers. So, it's a like it's a it's a replacement, but the lo logistics of migrating away, given that we have users who rely on WebSocket Star, are not easy. And I don't think we are like committed too much to doing that change. If we plan to deprecate those uh, Star protocols anyway, um, I'm not sure if that's a useful explanation, but that's uh, the gist of it. So it, the, the, the essential connectivity approach is still the same as WebSocket Star, but it has some improvements around fault tolerance and, and uh, reliability. Yep. So, uh, the, do we have an understanding of who the existing WebSocket Star users are? Like how many people or, or who are we breaking if we just shut those or rendezvous service servers that we run down today? I'm pretty sure uh, the thing is that it's actually not IPFS project it's the P2P project. Uh, so it's not just uh, those rendezvous servers for WebSocket style protocols are not only used by IPFS, JS IPFS nodes, but every project that is using JS p 2 p So I believe like MetaMask may run their own rendezvous servers, or they may also have our, like we, we provide a default one, and a lot of people are using that. We may get some metrics from a Bfrost team uh, about how many connections uh, are there from unique IPs and stuff like that. Um, so th that's like the key problem. Uh, people are using that. It's in a default configuration. If in our examples, a lot of people use that for demos and we cannot simply like uh, shut it down. We, if we want to uh, replace, WebSo replace WebSocket Star with Stardust, we would have simply create a new set of Stardust uh, really servers while still maintaining the, the old ones. Um, yeah, can, can they exist in parallel? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, because like uh, the Stardust protocol, has, it's like a separate protocol. So they can coexist, a single node can use both. Uh, the, the, I think that there's somewhere like, like a plan uh, that we, like we could simply like in one release of JSAPFS, we could run both. And then in the next one, we would remove the WebSocket star, uh, but still run the servers if someone had that. Uh, but this is orthogonal to any WebRTC work or connectivity work. Yeah, it's, it's using WebSockets, and that's the problem with WebSockets. It's not only signaling, 
it also is used for pushing uh, bytes. So there is a WebRTC star, which is a bit better because it's using or uh, it's using uh, this relay only for like ra actual rendezvous and signaling. And then there's a peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC connection established. Uh, so uh, that would be much better uh, to get that uh, to the point uh, where it's enabled by default because it would put less load on our infrastructure uh, on our like uh, star and, and no, servers. And less centralization and probably better local network performance by far. Yeah, and more people could simply run their own signaling servers without like, contrib like being taxed too much for providing that service. Yep. Okay, thanks for, thanks for clarifying. Um, I, I wonder what they're like, what, what is the, I just saw some references to, to the Stardust bit. And so I was curious if that actually ended up helping us. It was that laying the groundwork for eventually getting like client side WebRTC, DHT, things like that. But it sounds like it's orthogonal. It's not necessarily related at all or even. Yeah. Uh, the way I, I see it is that like after uh, Jacob and LP2P, JS lp 2 p project are done with refactors, I think it's uh, worth checking in with them about this peer-to-peer -peer signaling. What's the time frame for actually seeing that? And then we can re-evaluate, is it worth uh, switching to Stardust in the meantime? Uh, that's like an open question. Uh, are there benefit? Like, does it provide enough benefits to to like make it uh, worthwhile? All right. Is it, are, do you join the J, the lib P two P meetings or JS lib P two P meetings? It'd be great to be able to get an answer to that sooner rather than later, so we have an understanding kind of what the time frames there are. Yeah, I should uh, start dialing in. <laughs> it's a month. I, I think it's a Mondays. But uh, like Jacob is on a uh, core implementations call as well. So I can okay. put that question there. And Thank that's uh, pretty good because Alan is also there and Alan uh, from JSIPFS will be extremely interested in that change. Because that's like the, the key, connect, like the WebSocket star right now, it's a key connectivity feature for JSIPFS in web browser basically. Um, Cool. Um, next one, maybe companion message about missing that demon is too serious. Uh, no, this is probably, I should probably just file this as an issue. We can, we can skip it. The guy was like, I installed Companion on Firefox Nightly and it's, it's not working. I'm stuck here. I was like, no, you're not, you're not stuck. That, that's exactly where you should be. So maybe, uh, may, maybe we should revise that message to make it clear. Like Companion still provides benefits, even if there's no local node. There's a whole set of features that Companion provides, but it's not really clear from that page that Companion still provides a bunch of benefits, even if there's no local daemon to connect to. Uh, the thing is that uh, on the screenshot in that tweet, let me like share, because there's, it, it's interesting. Uh, it's a mobile version of Firefox. It's actually not Firefox, not, it may be Firefox for Android beta, but it's not Firefox nightly. So the, I, think it's, I think it's just Firefox Android, really. Yeah, so the thing is that uh, it's the same UI, it's the same extension, that's pretty cool. You can run uh, Firefox for Android, not Firefox preview, Firefox for Android. They have, <laughs> they are separate apps on the store. The original one. The original one. Uh, and you can run the same uh, browser extensions uh, and it, as in desktop. Um, including IPFS Companion. The, the problem is that like the screen is created for desktop user. You cannot like go to the console or unless you root at your phone and, and start the daemon. You can install like the uh, IPFS uh, daemons for, or on the Play Store for Android. Uh, one is, uh, I believe, like Sweet IPFS. Second one is like IPFS Droid. Uh, I tested it. It works if you start them companion in this Firefox for Android will detect it and start. Uh, here it's just a, sort of like a mixture of a message that, sent, that is centered around desktop. We probably could detect that you're running in, on Android. Uh, the problem is like Firefox for Android is deprecated 
and Fire, the, the future of Firefox on Android is uh, something called Firefox Preview. It's a different like engine in different code base, and that code base does not support browser extensions same, yet. Same, same rendering engine, but you can swap out rendering engines easily. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's probably for uh, like for iOS, because on iOS you cannot like use. Uh, it, it's actually more for Android. So on Android, they want to be able to sometimes use whatever the native rendering engine is, and oh. sometimes use Gecko uh, on different Firefox-based products. So you might have a Firefox-based product that uses the native renderer. You might have a Firefox-based product that uses Gecko. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, I agree, but it's like mostly a UX problem. Uh, <laughs> Not a major uh, issue. But yeah. I thought it was cool that somebody was like, I was. They asked about mobile, and I was like, Yeah, you can. You can do this combo, and you get some stuff. Oh, I for, I forgot to mention. Uh, so you don't need to actually run this uh, IPFS Droid or. Uh, like a daemon, separate daemon. You can go to preferences of an extension in Firefox for Android and switch to embedded JS APFS. You won't be able to use it for browsing websites, but you will be able to like upload a photo and get a link and share it to someone on mobile. Uh, it's a small See, that's, that's That's pretty cool that a thing that most people don't know that like out of the gate would be pretty rad. Yeah, so that's like the, the UX, I, there's an issue about that. <laughs> like sure. it, improving UX on Android. The problem was that like I deprioritized it because uh, the moment like the Firefox for Android was deprecated, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so th this is an example of what I think would be cool to basically ditch all the companion, just for as an example, like fork companion, remove all the branding, make it an IPFS share, and only highlight that one feature. Publish anything to IPFS using the embedded JS. Boom, done. All it does is share. That's it. Share yeah. freely, whatever you call it. Like, you know, sh unstoppable share, whatever. Yeah. We could do that. that okay. I, 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 have, I have to go right at 10. And I, I noticed there's one more item on the agenda. Oh, yes, yes. Quick screen share. And uh, just like, the, 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 there's this spec called sub origins and, and it had like a long life like it had a good run years past but everything comes to an end and I close this issue uh, so now let's take three seconds of silence uh, in memory of this uh, spec that was never meant to be oh well Subdomains will solve all our problems. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining. Thanks, y'all. So nice to see you again. Good luck with your exams. Back. Let me wave slowly and stop recording. <laughs>